Connors T, how are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast and the second story in our Rebirth series. This episode is the story of Oshin of the Fianna and Patrick of the New God. And it's told by Aaron Hegarty and Oshin Ryan in a special live recording. We'll be bringing you more stories in a live stream tomorrow night. And if you're in the Dublin area, there are still tickets to our show tomorrow night at MVP. So go get them. This podcast is brought to you by our supporters at Patreon. You can join them over at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or make a one time donation to the PayPal button on our website. Like, share, comment. And above all, enjoy. And for now, Aaron, tell us a story. Wait, we keep this one snappy, will we? Yeah. You know, Patrick became very famous for being a saint, but he wasn't always Saint Patrick. You see, he was from a land to the east of this island, another bigger island. He was from a place called Wales. And on that coast, he was born, he was captured from sea pirates. There was people who brought him back to Ireland and these raiders had pillaged and plundered and taken what they could with young Patrick along with them. And they went to the middle of the country and they put him to work and he was out minding the animals and tending the fields. But one day, when the moon was big and bright, he set flight and ran away from his captors. He managed to get onto a boat and escape back home, but when he landed, he heard a voice calling to him. A voice from Ireland. Maybe it was Bamba Fole Eru, the goddesses of the land. Whatever way it was and whatever voices spoke to him, Patrick knew he had to come back to this land of Ireland. And, well, he took a while. He studied the words of very religious men. And so then when he came back to Ireland, he had something to preach and something to give and something to offer and ask for peace to be made because the warring clans and the kings that fought with many factions and fights all over the land of Ireland from the north to the south, the east and west, well, they congregated at best when the fire was lit on Crowpatrick by Patrick himself. And he asked for peace then, and for the High King of Ireland to become Christian and do away with the old beliefs and the old gods. And so they did that, just that. And everyone saluted St. Patrick and named Crow Patrick after him. Legend had it, he dispelled all the snakes in the land and even defeated and killed the great Caer the mother of the devil himself, the most evil and vicious devil from the bottom of the hellfire itself. So some say, no, St. Patrick came and he cleared great plains in order to help the poor work and provide for themselves. He built great churches, places for people to gather, congregate and pray. And so he removed the hierarchies in Ireland and everybody was equal in the eyes of God and none of the old gods were worshipped anymore. None of the old stories were told all that much. And the time before was forgotten until a knock came to his door. And there three men carried a large old man This old man was strong looking, sturdy, grey haired and he could be a thousand years old. But he looked strong enough that no one wanted to mess with him. And when he woke, he declared that his name was Oshin of the Tiernan Oak. And the great and fabulous Fianna of old. Now when Patrick heard this, he was quite surprised. He got his scribes to write down everything Oshin told him and he spoke at length about the Fianna of old, their tests, the trials to get into them, the great Fionn McCool, the Salmon of Knowledge, his defeat of all ill at Samhain, at Tara, 
and many of the old stories that you might know today. And that's why we know they're true, because St. Patrick wrote them down, and I'm just telling them to you. But they talked quite a lot, and, well, the agreement they came to was that Oshin could stay in this place with St. Patrick as long as he paid his way in work. He wouldn't be paid a wage, but he would get his bed and board, and he would be happy out for that. And Oshin agreed, although he was not very happy about it. He was used to... Well, having things gifted to him. He was, after all, the son of Fionn McCool, a great and brilliant poet and warrior of the Fianna. So he expected some classy treatment. Now with St. Patrick, he would work like any other, get his hands dirty in the ground, planting, and sure enough, building and working hard on the land. But he was a hard man to keep happy. Because Oshin ate an awful lot and was cantankerous and cranky and always giving out left and right. And, well, St. Patrick, he obliged because he had so many great stories. And every night Oshin would keep everybody entertained with the stories of the Fianna and the legends of old. They were always some way far-fetched, Patrick thought. Although he still instructed his scribes to write down every word he said. So that's why we have a record. But one day, Oshin said Fionn McCool defeated great and vicious demons from the other world, the, the army of the dog heads and the cat heads, and he defeated the king of the world when he invaded them in Ventry Bay. He even defeated a, a giant from Scotland who made the giant's causeway. And after hearing Oshin say that Fionn McCool had defeated the greatest monsters ever to face Ireland, Patrick thought he'd better speak up. Because he had talked to the care tonic himself. He had lit the fire on Crow Patrick to drive out the snakes from Ireland and there it was the Caer Tonic came from the depths of hell to run fast at him but the holy water and the swords that he lashed against the Caer Tonic made it run away from him and so he followed on horseback and he galloped after her, the mother of the devil himself the most vicious devil in all of the world and, well, he tracked her down to Loch Derg, the great red lake that got its name from this fight, as he followed her into the great lake and splashing around with the foam coming from the splashes as they dove into the water fighting each other, he struck the head clean off the care tonic. The great worm poured a whole batch of blood into that lake that turned it red. So red it got the name Loch Derg, the red lake. And that was the day Patrick dispelled all of the snakes from Ireland. But then he told Oshin that all of his friends of the Fianna, all of the great heroes, and his father, Fionn McCool, they were all brilliant warriors, but they did not accept the one God Almighty into their hearts. They were not Christian, and so they were not in heaven where every one of them would go to after they died and spend all eternity praising God Almighty. Where are my friends and father, so Oshina asked? Well, St. Patrick said, they're down with the care tonic and the devils themselves in the pits of hell being tortured by the demon. Oshina thought, <laughs> That can't quite be right, because Oshin, he knew that Fionn McCool and the Fianna would be fighting and frolicking and having a great time for themselves if they had any challenge down in hell. He said to Patrick, I, I know you might have fought some demons and you might have got rid of some snakes, but considering that I'm an old man and I can still do the work of 10 of these men in front of me, it is clear that I came from a greater time. We were better fed then. Things were greater and bigger. And besides that, I've seen ivy leaves as big as your skillet of bread. Berries on the rowan trees bigger than those churns of butter. I've seen blackbirds bigger than your great big cows. Patrick said, <laughs> excuse me, this is a lie. There's no way on the world you've seen a blackbird the size of a cow. 
O'Sheen was not much happy about being called a liar. After all, strength of limb, purity of heart, and actions to match his word were the fact and the motto of the Fianna. And so O'Sheen was furious. He turned to a serving boy and he said, you and me, buddy, we're going to team up and prove this man wrong once and for all. Go and get the litter of pups that I saw the she-dog give birth to yesterday. Bring them here to me. The boy did as he was told. And O'Sheen stuck the hide of a pig up on top of the wall and he picked the pups and flung them up against the wall. And each one, well, they splattered and rolled down until the last one flung up, he clung on. And he was clinging on and growling and growling. And O'Sheen took that dog and said, this is the pup for us. Now put him away for a year and a day and don't give him anything to eat other than gruel. But nothing with blood, no meat for this hound for a year and a day. He's the guy. Good and mean. And I want the taste of blood and flesh. And so, after the year and the day, O'Sheen took that great big hound and the serving boy and they went to Glen Smuel. Now, at a standing stone that was thousands of years old, O'Sheen dug, dug, dug deep, deep down and found an iron ball he had buried centuries ago. And a great sword and one last thing, a horn in which he blew three times. Now, after the third big bellow, He saw three great flocks of birds fly up from the sky. And the child next to him, the boy, hid behind his leg to see these huge black birds diving towards them. The first flock flew over their head. He'd never seen birds as big as these. The second flock of birds, bigger than the last, flew past. And then the third were as large as cows, each one of them. And they flew on past. And Oshin said, point me at the biggest one of them. His eyesight wasn't very good. So he'd look around and throw the iron ball in the air without knowing exactly where he's pointing but he knocked one of the birds out of the sky and they came down and landed and the dog went berserk he ran towards him rushing and angry and snarling and snapping he took to his throat ripping and tearing but the bird fought back with talons and claws and a pecking beat a furious fight lashed out between the hound and the bird but eventually well the dog got his neck and Oshin took his head clean off him He dragged the body of the bird back to Patrick. He said, how big is that bird? Patrick said, that's about as big as a cow. And then Oshin cut the belly of the bird open and in the belly was an ivy leaf and a rowan berry. How big is the berry? About as big as a churn of butter. How big is the leaf? About as big as a skillet of bread, said Patrick. Now realising that Oshin had called forth birds from a time long ago, had passed through the other world and proven the point that he had not lied and things had been magical and mystical a long time ago. But Oshin was old and he did not last long after that. And he knew death was coming and he lay in his sickbed for a time. And Patrick came and he tried to convert him once more to Christianity so he could go up to heaven and pray to God all the time, rather than going out to hell, being with the demons in hellfire. Oshin thought, well, he thought of Tiernan Oak, Fado, Fado, the long time ago that it was, and Eve Kenor, and the magic and beauty and fun they had in the land of eternal youth, the laughter, the joy, And he couldn't imagine anything being better than that, not even heaven. So he said, well, if my friends and my father are down in hell fighting demons, I think I might have more fun out of that. And he breathed his last. And on his last breath, it is said, St. Patrick cried a single tear to see his friend go.
This podcast was produced and edited by Oisín Ryan. You can find out more about us on our website, candlelittales.ie. And we're on all social media, so like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales or send us a message or get onto our mailing list. For more videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has a Candlelit Tales for Kids playlist. Hashtag Candlelittle Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channel really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We also do really like to hear back from you with your questions and requests. So please feel free to contact us directly or leave your question in the comment section below because what we really want to do is get these stories out there. Share them with as many people as possible. So anything you can do to help, we really appreciate. And we really appreciate you listening. Gurmila Magar.